Hey, welcome to day 22 of nymphing in November. I'm gonna tie a fairly traditional nymph today called the hair's ear. This is not a fly tying instructional video. This is tying flies, telling lies, and having a Sunday morning cocktail. <laughs> so we've been fishing a lot, I'm kind of taking the day off to restock my fly box and tie up some nymphs. But I thought I'd also tell you the story of how I decided to marry my husband, Tim Savard. Uh, if you didn't know, Tim used to work in a place called Hunter's Angling Supplies. And if you ever saw the catalogs, that was, you know, this goes back in the day. So if you were a tire, they had, used to have an awesome tying catalog. But he was their photographer. So all those amazing photos in the uh, catalog were his. I did not get my proportions right. There we go. So I met him uh, because I used to hang out at that shop. But I also, uh, I had a friend introduce us years ago. And we were all at a fishing show. And uh, I got to meet him. And he used to have this amazing white ponytail. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That was my Tim. Anyway, so speed up. We went on a fishing trip to uh, New Brunswick. And then after that, we started dating. And then after that, uh, he moved up to Lobstick and we were running the lodge together. One evening after dinner, we went up to fish Second Connecticut Lake. Uh, well, right below Second Connecticut Lake. The Connecticut River has a bunch of tailwaters, and um, those are the places that we used to like to fish, and one of them was this right below Second Lake Dam. I used to call it the barrel, because when fishing was good there, man, it was just like catching fish in a barrel. The salmon used to come up out of, second, out of First Connecticut Lake, to, to, heading towards Second Connecticut Lake, and because of the dam, they would all stack up there. Uh, because I couldn't get through because of the dam. Anyway, so I would go up there and fish at night. This On this evening, Tim was there with me. There was uh, some soft water just underneath the tail race. And the only way to get to that was to kind of cross the river, kind of walk along a, a rock wall and kind of fish out fish over the water and into that soft water in the back. It was pretty hard to get to, but back then, you know, I was 29, 30 years old and pretty much invincible. Kind of, kind of like today. <laughs> uh, and I used to like to get in there and fish. And... Anyways, so as I'm climbing along that rock wall that, that fateful evening, grabbing one of the rocks and it came off in my hand, which totally unbalanced me. Uh, so I can remember looking at the rock in my hand and just falling straight over backwards, right into the, the water shooting out in that tail race. Uh, it was terrifying. And before, you know, the, the, the force of the water just swept me down river really fast. <laughs> Uh, one of those things you'll always remember and what what not to do, right? So, drop my rod. I'm now going down the river at what seems like a million f miles an hour. Uh, and there, to collect me as I went by was, was Tim. And, you know, I was pretty shaken up, as you can imagine. He uh, picked me up out of the water helped me collect my rod, which had on a big elk hair caddis, but the elk hair caddis had hooked on one of the rocks in that rock wall, and it was just hanging there right, <laughs> right where I was. So I just reached in the water, grabbed it by the grip, picked it up, gave it a little whip, and it dislodged the fly, and I had my fly back, which was pretty amazing that I got any of it back, actually. We climbed up <clears throat> and went back to the car, 
and uh, boy, I sat in the car for a while. I was pretty shaken, you know, without even really saying anything. Tim had been asking me to marry him for a few months, and I had kind of ignored him because, you know, I needed to keep my options open. <laughs> what they are. There's not a lot of offerings when you live in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, but um, I had been really reluctant to that point, but then having that experience gave me a whole new appreciation of him and appreciation of uh, what life together could mean. So I decided on that evening that I would marry Tim. We got married at Tall Timber Lodge uh, probably two months later, and uh, we've been married for well, our anniversary's coming up a week from today. Uh, 22, 23 years. Anyways, well, I hope you are out uh, nymphing or that you are at home nymphing or tying nymphs. <laughs> and you get out there, stay away from the damn headlines, stop watching the TV, and uh, join me for another episode of Nymphing in November, which will be tomorrow. I'll be at the, the tires desk tomorrow because it's uh, uh, going to be, I don't know, miserable and it might snow and all that kind of stuff. It's gorgeous out today, so I've really kind of blown a day by being here. But it's Sunday and it's time for cocktails. A little bit of day drinking never hurt anybody. Uh, so I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>